Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and uh, fire up Excel. And the way to do that is if you just go to the Start menu, and uh, Microsoft Excel should be there. If you don't see it, just search Excel, and that should pop up. And you, if you just go ahead and click on it, it should open up the software. Okay, uh, there might be a window that pop up with your name in it. Just hit OK. And the reason this pops up is because this is, might be the first time you are using the software, so try to customize it to your name. Okay, so before we get started, let's try to get familiar with the different tabs and the layout of this. Uh, we'll notice that Excel is basically a matrix system. We basically have uh, rows, and the rows are numbers. So you can see one, two, three. This is a row, and we have columns. The columns are verticals, and they're A, B, C. Now, the intersection of a row and a column is called a cell and every, ce every cell has an address. So you can really think about it as a grid system and if you go ahead and for example click here or click anywhere you'll notice that that cell number is over here. Do you see that? It says C5 on the top corner. So C5 basically stands for the location of this cell. It's column C row 5. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, try to take a look at some of those tabs over here. The first tab is the file tab and this is basically where you get um, to start a new one, save, print, do all that stuff. We'll explore that as we start building our sheets. Under home is where we get to modify the appearances, the merging of cells. So this is very similar to Microsoft Word. Um, and I'm pretty sure that everyone has used Microsoft Word as of this point. You can change the font type, uh, bold, italic, underline, font size, uh, the color of the cell, the color of the text. You can also change the alignment if you want it center aligned or top aligned, left aligned, right. Um, we can also merge cells and we can have an exercise on that. And you also have um, all this other information over here. We're also going to be focusing on fill today. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, auto sum and a couple of other formulas. Under insert, this is, a, this is your chance to actually insert tables, pictures, uh, shapes, clip arts, uh, in addition to inserting charts. So we can have a pie chart, a line chart, a column chart, all that stuff. We will be covering that in the next session. Uh, in addition to that, we can also insert equations and symbols. We will be dealing with those today. Um, also, we will be dealing with objects and Microsoft equation in a second. Um, all these other things, I urge you to spend some time to actually play around with. We will start learning them as we go more and more uh, through the lectures. Some of them we won't even touch, but... Um, I just want you to kind of like to just take a look at them and most of them are self-explanatory and you can honestly just uh, hover over one of them and you can get a description of what this tool does. So uh, it's very easy to use, very self-explanatory and uh, you can, you know, just clicking a couple times and if you do anything wrong, just hit control Z and that will undo uh, what you just did. On the bottom, you have many sheets. So notice I have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. I can also add additional sheets on top of that. Um, and basically inside that one Excel file, I can have different uh, programs. So what you want to do is you want to have um, one Excel file for every homework. And inside those sheets will be the different problems. So for your first homework, you have three problems. That means you should have three sheets. Does that make sense? You can uh, rename these by simply double clicking on them. And instead of calling them sheet one, I can call them problem one. And you can rename it for whatever really you want, but that should give you an idea of how to rename a sheet. Any questions so far? Okay, so you'll notice that you really don't run, um, you, you can't run out of space. I mean, you can eventually, but you'll see that we actually have a lot of rows and a lot of columns. And as I keep scrolling down here, you see it's pretty much infinite. Um, the chances of us running uh, out of space with this is, is pretty much impossible. And the same thing also applies for the columns. As I go in the columns, you'll see that the letters just keep um, adding more and more, and it's pretty much impossible to, uh, well, it is possible to run out of space, but for the applications that we'll be doing in this class, it's pretty much impossible uh, to do that. So let's just go ahead and, and start playing around with a couple of things. Um, I can select cells by simply clicking on them. I can also use the tab option, and if you see that tab, it allows me to move from one column to another within the same row. I can use the arrows uh, on my keyboard to move up and down, left and right. 
So depending on what you get used to, um, you can have different control options for your Excel sheet. Okay. Now let's start by doing something very simple, which is just writing your name, writing what class this is, and let's say this is a practice exercise. So I can just simply click on a cell, and I just click on cell A1, and I'm going to say name, and I'm going to move over to the other cell, and I'm going to write my name. Okay, so you'll notice that my name is basically too big to fit inside that cell. I have two options here. Um, are you having a hard time seeing this? Do you want me to magnify it? Yeah. From the looks of your faces, you look like you're staring in the sun. Does this help? Better. Okay. Um, so notice that my name here is too big to fit inside that cell. So there's two things that I can do. One is I can merge two cells together. So this cell and this cell, these two together, I can make them one cell. So instead of being in two different columns, I can make them in one cell. Basically, by selecting them, I can click on merge cell, uh, merge and center, and that will allow them to be one cell. So now notice that my name actually fits within that cell. So it takes up two columns, but it can fit there. Or what I can do is I'm just going to hit Control Z so I can go back to, to two separate cells. Uh, <coughs> I can actually resize the, the the column. I can resize it manually by clicking it, clicking on it, and dragging. So if I can move this, I can see that my entire column will actually get that big. So that's kind of it's up to you to decide: Do I want to merge cells, or do I want to change the size of the entire column? And simply by just double clicking it will resize it automatically to fit that uh, text width. Okay, so if I just double click on it, it will take that size automatically. So let's go ahead and say class ECE 102 problem practice problem. Okay. Now let's go ahead and explore uh, different possibilities for just the font and the text. Uh, notice here that for the name, if I want to make it bold, all I have to do is just click on the cell and I can click on B over here and that will make name bold. You see that? Let me make this a bit bigger here. That's not what I want. There we go. Okay. Now, if I want, you know, my name to be a bigger font, I can just click on it, and I can either come here to the drop down where it shows. Sorry, the graphics are like dying on me right now. Um, I can either click on A over here and that will allow me to increase I'm really sorry this is not working very nicely so I can click on this A here and I inc I can increase it uh, at an increment or I can click on the drop down over here and I can change the size if I want to specify a specific size okay now I can also change the color so let's say the background color for this um, for this first column, three rows, so I can select all of them. So I can click and drag, and that will allow me to select all of them. So click on one of them, hold down the mouse key, and just drag. And that allows me to select all of them. I can come here where it, there's a bucket sign. You know, this this magnifying thing is not working. It's would this help better? Okay, because I really hate that flickering. 
Okay, so I can click here and I can say, um, let's say I want to color these. I can just go to the bucket and I can choose a color. Let's say I want to make it light blue. There we go. Okay, I can also specify borders for these cells. So if I can select these, and let's say I want to put a thick border around them, or a thin border from the inside. So if I want a thin border, I just select all of them. And again, selecting as I click on one cell, keep holding down my mouse key, and then drag. Okay? And then I'm going to go over to, right next to the bucket, there's a, basically a sign that says, uh, bottom border and I'm going to click on the drop down and I get to choose what type of border do I want. So if I want all borders and notice how they're thin borders, I can just click on all borders and that will basically just add a boundary around my cell. Do you see that? Okay, do you want me to do that again? Okay, so I'm going to select all of it. So I'm going to select all these cells and then I'm going to go to the drop down over here that's right under the number. So there's a drop down and I'm going to select all borders. Okay, and that will add a, a very thin border to my sheet. But if, notice that some of you might not be able to see that border because you're like, hey Eli, there's this like faint border in the background. That border doesn't really show up when you print. So if I go to file, if I click on file and then go to print, this is really what's going to be printing. Okay, so you get an idea of what's going to come, come out on the piece of paper when you're trying to print. Okay? So let's go back to home. And what I recommend that you do is as of this stage, now is a good time to save your work. Okay, because you don't want to keep working and then computer crashes or, or something happens and then you lose everything. So now is a good time to save it. I'm just going to go to File, Save As. Okay, and this is why I told you you need a flash drive for. So please make sure that you bring a flash drive with you to class next time. An 8 gig flash drive is like 5 bucks these days. So just get one of those, it's very cheap, and that's the only thing I need from you. So for now, if you want to save it on a desktop or whatever you want, uh, just go ahead and do that and just say class practice number one. So it's saved now, and every so often, every time I do a couple of things, I'm just going to click on that floppy disk on the top to make sure that it saves. Okay, so that's one of the things that you have to remember. Please make sure that you back up your stuff in a couple in a couple different places. I don't want to hear excuses of my dog ate my flash drive or anything like that. So make sure that whenever you do something, you go home and you back it up on your, you know, your desktop and maybe a hard drive or something like that. So you always have a copy of all your work. Okay, are we good here? Does everyone have this? Okay, let's keep rolling. Now let's try to explore what are these cells um, can contain. If I go ahead and put 2.359645, whatever, just, I just picked a number. So if I go ahead and do that, notice that the alignment of those numbers goes directly to one side. I can modify, <coughs> I can modify that alignment by using those align tools over here. You see that? So I can either make it to the left, centered, or to the right. Is that clear? Okay. Now, let's say I only want to show two decimal places, but I still want Excel to remember all these decimal places here, but visually I only want to show two decimal places. That's where we start experiencing uh, format editing. So if I right click on that cell, and I can go down to format cells, okay, this is where I get to experience if I want to make it a number. So if I go ahead and click on a number, notice that I can specify how many decimal places do I want. Do I want two decimal places, three decimal places, whatever it is. Let's stick to two for now. But I can also specify other things. Let's say I want to specify currency. Okay, what if this is like a dollar amount? Okay, what if I, this is a date? It's a time, it's a percentage. So I can specify all these things from here and that will be applied to the cell. So anything that I do to that cell, um, it will basically pick it up. So let's say I'm going to go ahead with a number, and I'm going to go with two decimal places. Um, hit cancel. Right click. And you want to hit escape first. 
So that's a good point. So if you actually double click on that cell and you're inside that cell and you see that cursor, if you try to right click now, you won't be able to get access to that. So if I click on format cells, notice that you'll actually just see if you're doing a superscript, font size, all that stuff. If you're in that position, you want to hit escape so you're outside of that cell. You do not want to see that cursor. Now you can right click. And once you see the full menu, you can go to format cells. And, and you see on the top where it says number? Does that make sense? So if you get stuck, it's okay to let me know because probably two other people are stuck on the exact same thing. Okay, let's go ahead and with number and two more decimal places. And let's say okay. So notice how it says 2.36 here, but if I have this click, do you see on the top how it actually shows all the decimal places? So Excel is not forgetting all the other decimal places, it's just visually showing you only two. Does that make sense? So it's still storing all the information in the back. Are we good? Okay, so let's do something fun now. Let's say you're dropping a ball from, you know, a 25 foot high building and you want to basically figure out the height of the ball at different, like, at many seconds and the speed of the ball. So, you know, you're standing there with a timer and you're basically recording the height of the ball at different increments. Or let's say you have an equation, right? So you have an equation of how fast that ball is moving. So, what we're going to learn next is how do you actually apply equations in here. We're going to start with some basic equations and we're going to go so into some trig. Um, everyone has had trig before, before, right? Sine, cosine, everyone understands what I'm talking about? Okay, good. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with something simple. Let's say this is my time column. So I'm going to type time here. This is my position. And this is my velocity or speed. Okay. Do you see how the alignment is weird? Like some of them are on the left, some of them are to the right. So let's go ahead and make them all to the same point, either left or centered or whatever it is. Let's all you know, let's make them all go to the same location. Are we good? Okay. So, in order to calculate position and speed, we need an equation. But for the user, they have to understand where is that equation coming from. So, it's probably a good idea over here to say, like, hey, given, and I need to show what is that equation that I'm trying to use here. Okay? So, how do I do that? I can go to Insert, the Insert tab on the top. Do you see where it says object? Yeah. So we're going to click on object. And we're going to scroll down until we see Microsoft Equation 3.0. Okay. And we're going to hit OK. So what that will happen is it will open this, this kind of equation formula over here that allows you to enter an equation. So let's say position we're going to use h for position. So we're going to say h equals 0 0.5, or let's say you want to do 1 half. So it's 1 half at squared, right? So in order to type 1 half in here, you come over here, see where it says fractions and radicals? I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to select the first option. See that? Now it gives me a fraction. So I'm going to type 1 on the top and use my arrow down. I'm going to type 2 on the bottom. I'm going to move it over. So just using the arrows on the keyboard, I can move up and down and left. Okay? A T squared. Okay? Do you see how the squares really should be up, correct? So I can select that too. Okay, so now let me do it. Oh, I forgot. The new one, um, if you just click on the one right next to here, the superscript, you see that? And then I'm going to select the one here on, as a power, the first one. So that allows me now to type on the top. You get that? 
So I'm going to type 2 and then use again my arrow. And now my cursor goes big again. Right? Does everyone have this? Plus V. And I want I want a subscript. So I want V0, like basically initial velocity. So the way I do subscript is using the same tool that I did a superscript. I click on here, but now I go to the second option, which is a subscript. It's on the lower. Okay, so V0. Okay, and I use my arrow again, and I have a big T. Okay, plus H. I also want a superscript, uh, subscript 0, so I do subscript 0. Again, we're using our arrows to move left and right. Is that clear? Does everyone have this? And you can continue with this by simply clicking enter. You can do another line, which is our velocity. And I'm just going to do it really fast. It's AT plus V0. Okay. Now you'll notice if you actually try to type something, like an actual sentence, like let's say V is speed. Every time you try to hit the space bar, it gives you like a warning signal, right? And it doesn't really give you space. The way to fix that, you see that? If I try to hit space bar, it doesn't work. The way to fix that is if I go to format, uh, sorry, to style, Instead of math, I put text. Okay. Now I can say V is speed. You see how now you can actually type in text format instead of uh, formula, math formula. Does that make sense? In meters per second. Any questions on this? So when you're done, just click outside here somewhere, just double click, and you can hit escape, and there we go. My computer is freezing. You should be able to grab this and drag it. Does yours move? Okay. That's not helpful. Alright, theoretically you should be able to move it. It should move on your computers, but it's, I can't even do anything. Like, it just completely died. It's a great lecture to put on YouTube. Come on. Yeah, it died. I can't access anything. Okay, are we good? Alright, so let's come over here. Now, the, the first thing you have to remember is you never fill a table without actually using units. So, for time, we have to say, hey, it's in seconds. For position, we have to say it's in meters, and for speed, it's in meters per second. Okay? Now, let's say I want bold borders for these, so I click on each cell, so click on the first one, hold down the control key, click on the second one, keep holding down the control key, and click on the third one. So basically, I'm selecting each cell separately. And I'm going to go under the borders tool and I'm going to select thick box border. Clear? Do it again. So I'm going to click on the first cell, hold down the control key, keep holding, click on the second, and keep holding, click on the third. Okay? 
and I'm going to go to borders, thick box border. Are we good? You're sitting way too far. <laughs> Is this better? Are you having a hard time seeing it up top? top? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just have bad <laughs> You probably need to sit like right there. <laughs> okay. Okay, are we good? Any questions? Okay, so here's the deal. Look at that. I actually want more space here. Okay, so because I need to. What is A? What is H naught? What is V naught? Those are constants that I need to give. So all I have to do is just right click on that row 5 and I can right click and I can say insert and notice how it inserts a column right above it. So I can insert as many rows so don't ever be worried about oh hey I positioned this in the, in the wrong direction or wrong position or whatever it is. I can always resize things. I can move things around to make it fit really my needs. Okay? So over here I'm going to say A and that's going to be negative 9.8. So I'm actually specifying a number for it. And A is in meters per second squared. Okay, you right click on the row and then you hit insert. Got it? Yes. Okay. What do you got? Okay, so we're going to go to borders and we're going to select bold box. Tick, yes. That's what I meant. I was just testing. <laughs> okay. Is it there? Or? Are we good? Feel free to raise your hand. I'll come over. Ask the people next to you. If they're yep. yep. You read my mind. Okay, so how do we make the squared for the S? We basically get to double click it. We're going to select that too. Okay, so double click. You want to insert one more column. Uh, sorry, one more row. So we don't want to use that caret sign, right? That uh, whatever, the shift six. We don't want to use that because we want to actually type it correctly. So the way we do that is we're just going to double click, select that to right click, format cells, and you see where it says superscript. There's, a, there's three boxes that says effects, strike through, superscript, subscript. We're going to select superscript, and we're going to hit OK. Do you see now how it shows A? Uh, do, you, do you see how it shows the squared over the S? Okay. Are we good? All right, and we're gonna say V zero. And again, I can make the zero as a. I'm gonna say that's zero, and H zero. And I'm gonna say that's also zero. So I added one more column here just to give me some space, just some, some breathing room. And I, I want to make sure that those zeros are subscripts. So again, format cells, subscript. Format cells, subscript.
OK. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds for to catch up. Yeah, if you want, you can double click it and that will enter the cell. That's actually a very good question. Um, so let's say this is ni negative 9.8. If I click on it and try to start typing something, like 10, it will override the negative 9.8, right? But if I still have the 9. Point, I can click on it, and there's two ways. I can either click on it and then come over here. Do you see that formula bar on the top? And if I click anywhere here, basically it allows me to add to it instead of erasing it completely. Or I can just double click until I see the cursor inside that cell and I can add numbers to it. Does that make sense? Okay, are we there? All right, let's start with time is zero. So we're starting at zero seconds. And again, notice how this zero is not lined up very nicely, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. We'll worry about making things functional, then we'll worry about their appearance. <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's look at the position. So position says it's 0 0.5 multiplied by A multiplied by T squared plus V naught T plus H naught. Okay? So technically, it is uh, the way to type a formula is I can't just start typing it in. I have to use equal. So basically, I'm saying position equal. So I click equal. Okay. So one half. Is everyone there before I start? We good? Okay. So 0 0.5 multiplied. But hey, we're not going to type the value of A. We're not going to type 9.8 because it's already in here. So what are we going to do? We're just going to hit multiplied, which is the asterisk on your keyboard. And we're just going to click on that cell. So notice how it selects it, B5. Now what this allows us to do is if we ever change the value of A to say negative 5, it will automatically update all values instead of doing it manually every time. That's the whole point of Excel. You can have a specific set of given numbers and you want to replicate those calculations over and over. Okay? So multiplied by T squared, which is T is cell A10, right? So I just click on it. And that's what you're seeing here. These are the cell numbers. So, and that is squared. Okay? So the a10 is the time, right? So because we have one half a t squared, and the t is the value of t is over here right now. Okay. Are we good? Now feel free to use parentheses. So look how cool the parentheses are. If I want to just put parentheses around that that piece, if I open the parentheses, notice notice what happens when I try to close it. So I'm going to try to close it at the other end. Now colors will be matching. So if I want to put an inside parentheses here, you see that? You see how that changes to green? In order to keep control of your parentheses, it's over here, it's in the top. So it tells me green and green, black, black. So you, for every one that you open, there's one that you close. Make sense? Okay. Plus, what's the rest of the formula? It says plus V naught T. So what is V naught? What cell is it? Talk to me. What cell is it? B6. All right. So we're going to click on parentheses. B6 multiplied. And which one is time? What cell is time? A10. You see that? And then I'm going to close parentheses. Your numbers might be different than mine because you probably added a different column or added more rows or 
whatever it is, it's okay as long as you have the formula there, as long as you're selecting the right stuff. But do you see how the colors over here, the blue, the green, and the kind of purple, reflect the color of the cell that gets highlighted? So you know exactly what you're selecting. Clear? Okay. Plus, I need H0, which is B7 for me, which is this cell. So plus this cell. So once I'm done with my formula, once I typed it all up, all I have to do is just hit enter, and I get an answer. So it already did the calculations for me. Now this might be overwhelming for you if you're using Excel for the first time. So let's try something simple just so you understand what's happening. If I say equals 2 plus 2, right, and I hit enter, it's actually doing the calculations for me. So the only thing different now is we're actually referencing, instead of saying exactly specifically what that number is, we're referencing it to a cell. Because look what happens now. What I just did is I said, what happens if I grab this ball and I'm actually dropping it from the ground? Right? Because I'm saying the initial height is zero. That means I'm already, or I'm already on the ground. So there's no way that thing could drop any further, right? If I'm already on the ground, it's going to be on the ground. Now what happens if I'm dropping this from a height of 25 meters? So if I go ahead and change the entry of this cell to 25, do you see how everything changes? Right? So what I recommend that you do as you start getting more familiar with this, all the cells that require an entry from the user, I usually call them like this light orange. Okay? So by calling them this light orange, you understand that these are entry cells. These are cells you can actually enter information in. These are calculation cells. Make sense? So I'm going to give you about a minute, and I want you to go ahead and type the formula for speed. So it's AT plus V0. Go ahead and type it in here the same way that we did for position. So I'm going to give you a minute for that. And I want you to calculate speed. So when you're done with the formula, you want to hit enter, otherwise it will select other cells. Okay, good. Uh, let's say by accident you colored something. So uh, I'm not. I'm still giving you time to finish it up. But let's say by accident you color this cell to be you know, orange or whatever you want it. 
All you have to do is just click on that cell again. You go to that bucket and you say no fill. Okay? Is that clear? Did everyone finish the speed? So the way we do the speed is equals. It is AT. So it is parentheses. A multiplied by T plus V naught. Clear? Right? So what does that mean? V naught is zero. That means I'm actually grabbing that ball from a height of 25 meters. I'm just letting it go. Basically, the minute that I let go of it, its speed is zero. It hasn't accelerated. What happens if I come over here and I change this to two? What am I doing in that case? Throwing it up, right? Now, why do you think I'm throwing it up? Because it's a positive number. Basically, instead of throwing the ball, instead of just letting go, I'm actually throwing it up by two meters per second. If I choose this to be negative two, basically I'm grabbing this and I'm just slamming it into the ground. Okay, so I would expect it to uh, change its position faster. Okay, now I'm, I'm a bit, uh, I think I messed my formula here somewhere. Because this is supposed to be taking this into account. Oh, never mind. So do you see this? Because my V naught depends on T, right? So I should start seeing changes here. Now, is that, is that clear for everyone? Do you see how changing those entries will change everything in, the, in your sheet? Okay. Now, here's a cool thing. You're actually timing this every 0.1 seconds. So imagine having to do this over the next four seconds, right? That's going to that's gonna take forever. So here's what you can do. If you type 0.1 over here, basically the, the start point and the increment, here's what you can do, guys. If I select both of them, all right, and I'm just going to come over here to the corner until my cursor turns into a cross or like a plus sign. Do you see that? I'm just going to click and drag. And look what happens as I go down. Look at my cursor. It changes numbers. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Do you see how it adds the increment? No? Oh, it's very small. It, it's, it's, oh. Well, yeah, well, there should be, do you see, okay, come close to the screen. There should be like a small number here, like a very small, oh, you see it there? Okay. Juan, you're giving me a hard time already. This doesn't work out, man. I always win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we good? Now, this is kind of annoying because what happens if I'm going at an increment of 0 0.01 to 100? So I have to keep dragging this forever. So there's another way that we can do this. So I'm gonna just going to select all of these, and I'm just going to hit delete. Okay, there's another way that we're going to do, and I'm just going to give you an intro, and I want you to kind of play around with it a bit for your homework. So do you see over here where it says fill? Right, it's under the Home tab. There's an option called Fill. And I've just selected the first cell, just the first cell. Okay, so we're going to see what's going to happen here in a second. We're going to click on fill, and we're going to fill, we can either fill down, but we really want to fill a series. Okay, so we're going to click on series, and here's what's telling us. Are we filling a row or a column, if you want to go down? Column, so go ahead and click on column. And we're doing a linear growth, right? So the step value is, what is your increment? So what's our increment for this case? 0 0.1. And what's our stop value? 4. Does that make sense? I'm just going to hit OK and look at the magic. Boom. Isn't that cool? I know you're super excited. Alright, so here's a cool piece. Instead of copying this equation over and over and over, right, all we have to do is just come over here to that cross, and I'm just going to 
double click that cross. So I hope that everyone gets this error. Twenty four. Are, are your numbers here the same? Okay. 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 Did everyone get this? Like the first two numbers are there, but everything else is a, is a disaster. So again, you just click here, you click on the cell, you come to the cross at the corner, and you double click on that cross. Okay, so notice what it did. It filled your columns all the way up to four. But why are we getting this error over here? Does, does anyone know? Okay, so let's see what's happening. If I double click this cell that I entered the numbers, I see it's selecting the correct cells, correct? Like it's half A, okay, got it, T squared, got it, everything is good. Make sense? Now look what's happening in the second one. If I double click here, Whoa, look at that. It actually shifted down. You see that? It shifted down. And if I select the third one, it shifted down even more. So it just keeps shifting down as I'm going down. And that's not good. So what do we need to do? Considering, so I'm going to go back to this first cell, and I'm going to double click it. Considering A, V0, and H0 are fixed values in their fixed cells, in order to prevent them from shifting down, here's what I have to do. So let's say for B5, right? B5 is A, so that's fixed. I'm going to click on B5. Or, sorry, in that formula, I'm going to click here where it says B5. Does everyone see that? On the top? No? So we're going to click on 25. Double click on 25. And on the top, you should see all your formula. Okay, so the first thing, which is your A value, is your B5. Do you see that? Okay, yours might be a different number, don't worry about it. So we're gonna click on B5 or B blah, and then we're gonna click F4. And that will add the dollar signs to it. Dollar signs means that you fix that cell. So F4 on your keyboard. Do you see how it adds that dollar signs? You didn't know that, huh? You just <laughs> Okay, we can do the same thing for the V naught. So n not not the A10, right? The T changes. The time is changing with respect to time, really, as we go down those rows. But for this piece, for B6, you see that B6? We're also going to hit F4. And for B7, we're going to hit F4. So everything that was given to us, we're going to fix it. Are we there? Someone lost? It's okay to ask questions. That's what you're here for. I won't yell at you the first time. <laughs> Are we good? Now go ahead and hit enter. So what you just did is you changed the formula of the first cell, but you did not change the formula of any of the cells below. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to go back to that 25, and we're going to come to that small cross on the corner. Did you change the numbers here? Alright, so we're going to come to the corner and we're going to double click on that cross again and notice how all the formulas in the below cells will be updated also.
Do you see that? Okay. Does that make sense? So if I ask you a question, what time does this does the ball hit the ground? What would you say? When would it hit the ground? Right? 2.2 .2 and 2.3 seconds. Because we go from a positive height to a negative height. That means it's basically digging into the ground right now. Are we good? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes now. And again, remember this formula does not have the dollar signs in it. So I want you to figure out the speed for this whole thing. So go ahead and take three minutes and let's go ahead and fill in the speed. Okay, so for speed I'm going to have equals and again it's A, but since I want A to be fixed I'm going to F5 it, uh, sorry, I'm going to F4 it multiplied by T plus V naught and F4 that. Okay? And I'm going to hit enter. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to click on that. And notice that my speed is negative. What does that mean? It's actually pointing down. Make sense? Okay, guys. So let's now let's, let's work on the appearance of this. You know, notice that the columns don't look very nice, or if I want to center them, or whatever it is, I can just select the whole thing. Just select the whole thing. And I can make it centered over here. Okay, so center, do you see where it says center on top? See how it looks clean now? Okay, I'm going to challenge you for one thing now. I want the position to only have one decimal place. So go ahead and make the position column only one decimal place. We already learned how to do that. Remember how do you format the cell? to make it one decimal place. Okay, so there's two ways of doing it. I can select the whole thing, right? Right click on it, format cell, and under number, I can select one decimal place. Okay, and there we go. Are we good? Is that clear? And of course, since going on the negative doesn't really make sense, I can just delete all that stuff. All right, so really, my, I just go to 2.3. Are we there? Now go ahead and make a border for all these. So you guys know how to add borders. Go ahead and add a, all borders for the whole table. And you can select always multiple rows and multiple columns at the same time. Now with your mouse, when you click on it, you can go left and right, up and down at the same time. So keep holding down and drag. No, don't click on that cross. Just click on the cell. Hit escape. Click on the cell. And then move left and up. There we go. Okay, so all borders. There we go. So now we have borders for all the cells. Okay, are we good? Any questions? So how are you going to be turning this in? I don't want soft copies, okay, until we, we're done with all the Excel. Okay, so for now I just want hard copies. Um, one thing that I have to warn you about, 
don't you even dare share those files with each other. It's very easy to track down. Okay, I will drop you from the class. It's not worth it. It's okay to work next to each other, but the minute that you decide to email those files, exchange flash drives or anything like that, I will hunt you down. Okay, it's very easy to find. So here's what I want you to do. Um, go over to view. Page break preview. And this should give you the size of the page that you're going to be printing out. So just make sure that you have one page per problem. And if you do, when you go to file, print, you notice that you can actually see it on one page. Does that make sense? Are we good? Any questions on this? Okay, so as I said for this second exercise, considering it's still the part of the same lecture, all I have to do is just add a new sheet. And by the way, if you're still in this view, just click on Home, and then you can go back to View tab, and you can click on Normal. And that will take it back to its normal view. You see those dotted lines? Those dotted lines basically tell you where the page ends. So if you basically cross those dotted lines, it means now you're going to two pages, three pages, and so on. Okay, so let's go ahead to the second sheet. And notice it's a brand new sheet, and it doesn't, uh, I can link it to the previous sheet, but I don't really have to. Okay? So again, let's say we have this header over here. Instead of entering this header every single time, all I have to do is I can just select all of it, hold down, and I can click Control C from the keyboard. So hold down the control and then C. Basically, it will copy it. Do you see how it starts like shimmering or whatever you want to call it? And then I go back to sheet two, I click on that cell, and then I click Control V. So basically, I just copied, pasted. So Control C is copy, Control V is paste. So control C and I go to the next sheet. I click on the cell and then don't double click on it, just click on it once and then control V. So I hold down the control and then V. Alright, go ahead and put a border on that because notice that my borders did not copy through. Oh, no, never mind, they did. I just have to resize it. Um, and this looks weird, so I'm just going to make all these bold. I guess I just made all this bold, and if you remember to resize it, you just double click on the borders are on the boundary between the columns between B and C if I just hover over my cursor will have like two arrows pointing in different directions so I can just double click on that and we'll resize it okay are we good okay so we know how to enter we know how to enter equations we know how to basically show the given now how do you actually enter pictures um, and shapes you can go to insert, see what says shapes. I can actually choose shapes from here. So I have triangles, rectangles, and of course a rectangle, uh, you can make a square from a rectangle, right? And I have all these different shapes over here. So if I'm going with a triangle, I can just click on that, right? And I can basically draw a triangle. But let's say this is not a triangle that I want. Like this is an isosceles triangle. Let's say that's not what I want. I can just simply draw it out, really. I mean, if I want to just go and line by line, I can draw my triangle. So if I click on line, I can say, hey, what if my triangle looks something like this? So I'm going to draw the base. 
And again, I'm going to go to Insert Shape Line, and then draw this one, and then Insert Shape Line, and then this one. And I can tell where those endpoints of each one of those lines is because when I hover over it, I see a red dot. Okay. I can recolor these. So if I want this to be thicker or anything like that, I can just click on it. I go to format. I can change the outline color. So I can make them different colors. I can change the weight. So I can make it thicker or thinner. So you guys get get to play around with this for a bit and and see which which option suits you best. Is that clear? But now let's say I want to call these angles. So if you guys remember from trig, let's say I'm I'm going to call this alpha, beta, and phi, okay, or theta, or whatever you want to call them. So if I want to enter those symbols here, it's very easy to enter the Greek symbols or any symbols that you really want. All I have to do is just go to insert. I'm going to click on symbol. Okay, and from here I get to choose what I want, but notice I have too much. Like this is just too many things I have to go through. Not only that, look at that, there's actually a sub-menu. So there's just menus inside of menus. So all I have to find is just find where it says Greek. It's not called Greek. What is it called? Um, Greek small letter. Yeah, it should be. Do you guys find Greek? It's not showing in mine. I'm gonna just roll through it. Yeah, that's one way. Uh, but there should be Greek here. Okay, let's just do that. Yeah, Greek. Okay, so we want alpha. So notice I have alpha, beta, phi, theta, all that, all these angles. Okay, do you guys find this? Sorry, I kind of jumped through it. Do you guys find this? So again, I'm going to go to insert symbol. Instead of font here, I'm going to roll all the way up. I'm going to select normal text. And under subset, I'm going to choose Greek. Greek and Coptic. Okay? So if I scroll down, do you see alpha over here? Okay. Now look where look what's going to happen when I select alpha and I hit insert. It actually inserts alpha inside a cell. That's not going to help me because I need to actually move that cell. So what do I do? Here's here's the way around it. When I go to insert under shapes, there's an option called text box. Do you see that? So if you're already in the symbol, just escape out of that and let's start in, let's let's try to insert the text box before we do the symbol. So go to Insert Shapes Text Box. Okay, so on top there's an Insert tab, Shapes, and the first icon is Text Box. Okay, and then that will open up. You see how my cursor kind of turns into like a, a cross? I'm just going to draw a rectangle. So I'm just going to click and drag, and this allows me to draw a rectangle. Okay. Okay, let me do it again. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, Text Box, and I'm just going to click somewhere, keep holding my mouse, and drag. 
So don't release the mouse. So click on text box. And then drag, and that should give you the text box. Okay, so inside that text box, you can write whatever you want that is really not contained to the cell. So, for example, I can just say, you know, hello. Okay, and you can type hello and hit escape, and then I can hover over the the boundary of that box, and I can move it around. You see that? You see how I can move it around? Now, here's the bad part. If I try to put hello over the, the triangle, do you see how it covers part of that triangle? That's because the background is actually solid white. So what I need to do is I go to Format. I go to Format. So if you hit Escape and just click on that boundary of the box. I'm going to go to Shape Fill. I'm going to select No Fill. You see now how I can actually see through it? So hit escape. Every time you want to exit uh, something, just hit escape. One more time. Okay, and then we're going to hover over the border until our cursor turns into like a small cross and then we're going to click no not, not on the back cell um, just on the front and then we're going to change that Okay, are we there? Now let's say I want to put alpha in here. So I'm going to erase hello. I'm going to go to insert symbol. Okay, so insert symbol and I'm going to select alpha and hit insert. So I'm going to add in I'm going to add an alpha symbol inside that box. Okay? Are we there? I'm going to hit uh, close when I'm done. So I have an alpha. Now notice that box has boundaries here. Right? You see how the box has boundaries? That's kind of annoying also. So I'm going to also go to format. See where it says shape outline? So format. So we're going to click on it until it's selected. We're going to go to format. And under shape fill, there's shape outline. Okay, and we're going to click no outline. So we have no outline and no fill. Does that make sense? And I can resize this box. And there we go. So now I have alpha as this angle. Clear? Any questions? Now, I want to call this angle over here beta and this angle over here to be phi. So instead of going through the whole steps again, guess what? I already have the box here, so I'm just going to click on it. Notice that when you try to click on it, it will select it right away. So what you want to do is you want to move your mouse to the border and then click on that so the cursor is not there. So you're selecting the whole box. Okay? Does everyone have that? Then we're going to click on Control C, so we're copying. Okay, we're going to click somewhere away, so click away on a cell. So click somewhere, wherever you want, and then hit Control V.
Okay? So I want you to repeat that step now. And I want you to put two more angles. I want you to call this beta and this phi. Because you know how to insert a symbol. Go ahead and do that. Not recording. So I have alpha and we'll say it's 30 degrees. If this is a trial run and I just want to express, let's say, the sine of alpha. So I can say equals sine of 30. So sine parentheses and I select the cell. Okay. You guys agree with this number? A sine of 30 negative 0 0.988. Do you guys know what the sine of 30 is? What is it? So, remember the, it's 1 half rad 2 over 2. Remember that? And then the cosine is the opposite of that. Remember that? Ah, oh, good old days, trig. Oh, you haven't taken trig? So you don't know sines and cosines? Okay. How did I let you sign up for this? <laughs> okay, this is this should be it. We won't deal with trig much more. But the reason that we get this number, which is not correct, is because Excel understands radians. Okay, so Excel does not understand degrees; it understands radians. Now, for example, if I want to actually express pi, I don't really write 3.14. I actually express it as p. So if I say equals pi open close parentheses, that's really pi. So the way to express pi is equals pi open close parentheses. That's how you express pi. Okay? Is that clear? So pi is just a constant. So you guys know that in order to convert from degrees to radians, what do we do? Pi over 180, right? So if I want to go from degrees to radians, I want to go... F so if I want to convert this, let's say this is degrees, and this is radians, okay? Basically, I would say equals 30 times pi divided by 180. Correct? Because every pi is 180 degrees. And I hit enter. So really 30 degrees is 0 0.5236 radians. Make sense? So I did 30, which is the B11, multiplied by pi, divided by 180. Okay? Are we there? I'm going to show you a shortcut here in a second. Okay, so if I say equals sine of that number, ah, oh, 0 0.5, makes sense. Now it works. So all I did was sine of that number. So basically, Excel understands radians, not degrees. Does that make sense? Any questions on this? So make sure for your homework assignment, when I give you like 30 degrees or things like that, you actually convert that to radians. So, this is kind of annoying to do this, right? Because if I have 30, hey, just give me, I want to stay in degrees. Or I want to stay in radians. Just don't make me switch back and forth. This is annoying. So let's say I remove this, and I'm going to remove this. So I'm just stuck with 30 degrees. Okay? Now I want to change this. I want to do the sine of 30, but I don't want to convert it to radians. So here's the fast way. 
right? Every teacher shows you the difficult way first and the trick. So just following the, the rule. Equals sine. If you want to convert automatically from radians to, f sorry, from degrees to radians, all you have to do is inside your sine parentheses, you say radians. So notice as I typed radians, do you see how uh, Excel helps me over there and tells me convert degrees to radians? So it tells me what that command does. Is that clear? So I now I use one more parentheses and I say 30. Or, hey, if I don't want to say 30, I basically just going to reference this cell. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter. So I get 0 0.5 right away. Isn't that smooth? So I don't have to convert columns. I can just write them in my formula. Clear? Now, let's say I have 0 0.5. And I want to convert 0 0.5 to the angle. So you guys know that there we can either do sine or we can do a sine. Right? So sine is basically where you're doing, if you have an angle, you get the sine value. But if you have a sine value, I want to figure out the angle, it's called a sine or a cosine or a tangent. Correct? So, okay, if you don't know trig, this doesn't make sense. But just believe me. Just follow along. I, I give you all the formulas for the homework. So, Let's say I have 0 0.5, or let's, let's do something a bit more funky. Let's do the square root over 2, or rad 2 over 2. Right? What is the rad 2 over 2 sign for? <coughs> 45. Okay, so how do I do that? Equals sqrt, that's square root. Square root of 2, divide by 2. So SQRT is the square root. So you probably want to have like a piece of paper in front of you to write pi, SQRT, how do you do square, how do you do all these things. Okay. So now if I do equals, I'm expecting to get 45 degrees, right? So I'm going to say a sine, because I'm going opposite now. I'm going to say a sine of this number. So a sine of this number. I'm expecting 45. The answer should be 45, right? The answer is not 45. Why is that? Because it's giving me radians. But how do I convert directly from degrees to ra from radians to degrees? It's very easy. The same way that we just did a second ago. But now instead of using radians, I'm going to say degrees Okay. Is that clear? Are we good? Oh, look at that, 45. Do you see the difference here? Look, hold on, look at the screen. Look, look what's happening. Over here, when we converted degrees to radians, radians was inside the sign. When we converted radians to degrees, degrees, degrees was before the sign. You see that? Look at the position. If it's inside the function or if it's outside of the function. Is that clear? Okay. Any questions on this? No?